When it comes to your business, no one provides better security and life safety systems than Safety Systems. Protect your employees, your products, and your records with a single phone call. Professional technicians ready to design, install, and monitor your cutting edge fire and security systems, electric locks and surveillance cameras, emergency and after hours response and repairs. Trust Safety Systems, East Tennessee's leader in security and life safety systems. At Phoenix Conversions, for 25 years, we've been the place to take your car, truck, or SUV for custom accessories and conversions. Whether it's that time of season, you want to personalize your ride for performance, or just stand out from the crowd, Phoenix Conversions carries the area's largest selection of custom accessories, built tough and fitting your everyday life. When it has to be the best, call Phoenix Conversions. Have you been hurt in a car wreck? Every red dot on this map marks a car wreck case worked by the car wreck attorneys, Bill Hotson Associates, like this one on the Andrew Johnson Highway. And got hurt in a wreck between two trucks. The insurance companies blamed each other and just wouldn't be fair. So we took it to court and got Ann a settlement of $180,000. We've been fighting these battles for 30 years and we're ready to fight for you right now. Experience you can trust, Bill Hotson Associates. For nearly 40 years, East Tennesseans have trusted Madisonville Marine. They offer great prices, terrific customer service, and the biggest selection of boats in the area. Boats like G3 John boats, built Gator Tough. G3 Johns include all the features you could want from a workhorse boat. Massive live well capacity, lockable storage, even a midship fuel tank that allows for smoother running. See for yourself at Madisonville Marine. There's no better place to buy a boat. The following is a presentation of Fox 43 Sports. You are watching the Sports Source Kickoff with John Pennington, presented by Madisonville Marine. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for joining us. We've got some dessert for you today in terms of Tennessee Vanderbilt coverage here on the Sports Source Kickoff presented by Madisonville Marine. We appreciate you joining us. Let's dive right into the information special we have for you here. First segment brought to you by our title partner, Madisonville Marine. Uh, right now, they have going on a G3 90 Days to Save sales event, $750 to $1,500 in rebates. Back to you, depending on the model, of G3 that you grab. Uh, they have just outstanding boats of all kinds, but certainly the 90 days to save sales event is one to check out. You can also check them out, madmarine.com, as you see right there. Let me welcome in the group of panelists we have put together for today. We have Jimmy Hines from Sports Radio WNML from seccountry.com. We have Mike Griffith, and right down there, VFL and NFL defensive end, Will Overstreet. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. We always start by talking about what's at stake in this week's game. Pretty clearly, a Sugar Bowl bid, unbelievably, and a ninth regular season win for the first time since 2007. Those are at play. Let me show you about the Sugar Bowl that we're talking about. Sugar Bowl is locked in to the second highest ranked SEC team in the final rankings. Well, the current rankings came out a couple days ago. Alabama's number one. Auburn is 13, but they still have to play Alabama. Florida's 15. They still have to play Florida State and Alabama. And then Tennessee is 17th. No other SEC teams are ranked. If Tennessee beats Vanderbilt, and if Alabama beats Auburn and Florida, likely that the Vols will be second highest ranked team in the league and likely going to the Sugar Bowl, if that's the case. Now, that is a huge, huge uh, consolation prize for a team that didn't win the East. If you're going to wind mm -hmm. up on Bourbon Street January 1st, it's hard to complain too much about that. But you better beat Vanderbilt. And to beat Vanderbilt, we're going to talk about the players who they'll need to shine. Three up, three down. Uh, we'll start with the ups. Who are the ups from last week? Who's playing well right now? I like Josh Malone. Uh, I think he has become a big play receiver for Tennessee. He's averaging 19.2 yards per catch. He's got nine touchdown receptions. Tennessee hadn't had a receiver catch 10 touchdown passes in a season since 2006 when Robert Meacham did it. So I think Malone is coming up with some big plays, and I think he's got a great chemistry going right now with Josh Dobbs. Mike Griffith. 
Uh, speaking of Josh Dobbs, that, how can he not be up? I mean, Josh has accounted for five touchdowns in each of the last two games. He's done it in amazing fashion. Played himself, has played his way back into uh, the NFL's eyes as a quarterback, I've been told. He's played that well lately. I still think he could be a great receiver, maybe a Terrell Pryor kind of guy. But yes. Josh has done extremely well in these last two weeks. And, uh, you know, the NFL folks are impressed. And I think he's played himself into first-team All-SEC. I guess it remains to be seen how people will vote, John. Will Overstreet, who you got in the ups? Alvin Kamara. I mean, what about a guy that was injured? You don't know how a guy's going to come back from a knee injury like that. He's, can he still have the speed, the burst, be able to make all the cuts? It doesn't look like he's had a problem with anything. It's not normal for a guy to be wearing a knee brace and still look that fast and still be able to stick his foot in the ground and change, change direction so quickly. So he's playing really, really well. Continues to show his stock and what that can do in the NFL. All right, let's talk about three down, three guys that haven't been playing particularly well and need to be playing better, and I will just bring it back the other way. Will Overstreet, who you got? Well, technically we could pick anybody on the defense <laughs> and just go with that, but uh, Cortez McDowell. Uh, getting lost last week in the reads, uh, not being able to see the running back when they cut back, and so not filling his hole. That causes a lot of issues, and that's what you see a lot of times with this defense, especially the linebacker position, is guys just not making the right reads. And it's hard to coach up a player that's not looking and seeing where the ball's going and then filling the right hole. That's hard for any scheme to work if they're not doing that, ba the basics. And he's one of about 11 guys that are having some problems. Right? Yeah, I mean, yes, let's you say, said, I mean, like I said, yep. literally, you could pick anybody. Any of them. You didn't go defense, though. Where are you going, Mike? Well, part of the reason Josh Dobbs has looked so fantastic is because he's had to. He's been running for his life. And, and Drew Richmond is a guy that started the year as the starting left tackle. He's a former five-star guy. He's back in the starting lineup. I know everyone's praising Drew because he's, he's working hard. He's staying after practice. Guess what? That's what you're supposed to do. If you want to be a good football player, Drew Richmond, they say you're soft. They say the coaches can't yell at you. I want to see if this guy ever lives up to his billing, John. If he's soft, you just yelled at him. All right, next we have, <laughs> yes, I did. We have Jimmy Himes. Jimmy, where are you going with I'm the motivated now? motivated by that one. Wow. Um, I, I'm going to go with Darren Kirkland, Jr., linebacker. I, I know he got hurt earlier this year with a high ankle sprain. He missed some games. And I thought he was one of the better linebackers in the SEC entering the year. Since his return, I have not seen him make an impact. Now, some of that, obviously, to me, would be because he's not getting much help from a defensive line that's getting caved in. But he still is not making the plays that I thought he would. So I've been a little bit disappointed in his performance since his return from injury. He's had some of his defensive linemen used as bumpers and blockers <laughs> back into his face. And, and he may not be 100%, but I agree with you. And that, look, the injuries are a legitimate issue with this team. However, when you get a guy, when you get a guy back, and you don't see him making a difference, okay. Now, now you know, every week it's like, is this on injury? Is this on schemes? Is this on schemes? Is this on injury? Guy comes back and he's not well, making the plays that you anticipated him making. It makes it harder to say, well, it's the injury. It's all injury. We've seen Sutton come back from injury and play well, and Kamara, yes. as well pointed out, but to me, not Kirkland. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Vandy has won three of the last 11 contests with Tennessee. The days of, oh, you just line up and beat Vanderbilt, those are gone. And, in fact, in reality, they weren't always as exaggerated as people made them out to be. I mean, Peyton Manning, you go back, look at his last three years against Vanderbilt, they were all struggles. Uh, however, this team, this Vanderbilt team, is playing for a bowl bid this year, so they have some motivation in addition to just beating Tennessee. Tennessee's motivation is trying to get to a ninth win, which seems kind of esoteric. Hard to say, woo, nine wins. Or a Sugar Bowl bid. Will Overstreet, which is the better edge if you're a player? Trying to get a bowl bid? or trying to get a good bowl bid and win a ninth game? Trying to get a bowl bid. Just plain and simple for the seniors on that, on that team, it's either your last game or you get one more game. So, I mean, for them, it's all about, can I play football one more time? Because if I'm not going to be in the pros, this is my last game. So the motivation of getting that one more game, the bowl game, I think is much more uh, motivational than just saying, can we get a better bowl game? If you're playing for your life. That always helps. Let me flip it and ask you two very quickly about 30 seconds each. Uh, let's say, though, that Tennessee had the better edge. But this is a team that had everything on its plate going to South Carolina. Granted, they mm -hmm. have excised a clear chemistry issue in Jalen Hurd, and they've played better since then. However, how much, even if Tennessee has the edge here mentally, which Will says they don't, if they did, how much could you even buy into that because of the way they laid the egg at South Carolina when they had the same kind of motivation before them then? I, I would buy in because of what you just said. I think they don't have the chemistry issue that they had before. I also think they realize they blew one chance against South Carolina. 
don't blow it again. You've almost got a mulligan with that potential to get to a sugar bowl. Amazingly enough, John, had Florida actually lost to LSU and Tennessee gone to the SEC championship game and beat Alabama, they'd be going to the Sugar Bowl. So they kind of <laughs> took the back door and for yeah, people who like bowl a, trips, that's right. this is, and this is a hell of a bowl trip. This will be their biggest bowl, I think, since the 1998 National uh, Championship Well, game. I mean, you look at 99, they went back to the Fiesta Bowl, but this nobody was bigger. thrilled about yeah, it. Right. Uh, right. You get a Sugar Bowl, it would be the first time since 1991. You're talking 26 years. You know, that's a generation since Tennessee has been to New Orleans, which it's hard for me to wrap my head around that. All right, when we come back, you hear it all the time. It's hyperbole. Uh, if I was this team against Tennessee, I wouldn't even throw the ball. Is Tennessee's defense so bad that you can get into that area literally? Plus, a little later in our show, champions of life. Yep, we'll discuss. Come on back. For nearly 40 years, East Tennesseans have trusted Madisonville Marine. They offer great prices, terrific customer service, and the biggest selection of boats in the area. Boats like Skeeter Bass Boats, the maker of the very first American bass boat. Skeeter's consistent innovation creates the most maneuverable, best engineered, and best designed boats for anglers everywhere. See for yourself at Madisonville Marine. There's no better place to buy a boat. Thinking of a gift for the entire family? Games and Things has great deals on all in-stock and special order pool tables. With holiday movies and bowl games coming up, be sure to check out the largest selection of theater seating in the area. For those last-minute gifts, see Games and Things for cue and case combos, darts and dartboards, poker chip sets, table tennis, foosball, and air hockey tables. Or if you can't decide, get a Games and Things gift card. It's your holiday destination, Kingston Pike at Lovell Road, Games and Things, because life should be fun. At Phoenix Conversions, for 25 years, we've been the place to take your car, truck, or SUV for custom accessories and conversions. Whether it's that time of season, you want to personalize your ride for performance, or just stand out from the crowd, Phoenix Conversions carries the area's largest selection of custom accessories, built tough and fitting your everyday life. When it has to be the best, call Phoenix Conversions. Have you been hurt in a car wreck? Every red dot on this map marks a car wreck case worked by the car wreck attorneys, Bill Hotz and Associates, like this one on I-40 near Asheville Highway. Ed got rear-ended by a truck and hurt his back. He couldn't have an MRI because of an old war injury, so the insurance company refused to pay. We filed a lawsuit and they paid. Ed fought for all of us and we fought for Ed. Experience you can trust. Bill Hotz and Associates. Welcome back into the Sports Source Kickoff presented by Madison Marine. This segment brought to you by Games and Things. You saw the ad right there. Their holiday specials are now up and running. Need to get out there in terms of Christmas gifts. Boy, they have it all. Bars, uh, bar stools, home theater seating, pool tables, pool cues, other games, arcade games, you name it, they have it. Games and things. So not just games, they got things too. All right, uh, guys, as we showed on Sunday's show on WATE, this is the worst run defense in Tennessee history. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. colossally bad. The last two weeks they have averaged giving up about 430 yards per game to Kentucky and Missouri. Not exactly, you know, the two top teams in the country. Um, it's worse than the Sinceri defense of 2012 in terms of rushing, stopping the mm -hmm. run. It's incredible. Vanderbilt doesn't have the best run game in the league. They're 11th actually, but they do uh, have Ralph Webb who is fifth in terms of the SEC just as a one-man gang. Vandy went for 208 yards last week on Ole Miss. Um, you look at Tennessee, that defense, you look at Vandy's offense, you hear this all the time, it's always hyperbole, it's an exaggeration. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw the ball until I had to against this team. Will Overstreet, I'm going to start with you. How close to a reality is that in your mind with as bad as Tennessee's defense is? Very close. I don't have any doubts about that. I mean, that would be my game plan. It's just like if a pitcher can't throw a strike, you don't swing until he throws his first one. I mean, really, with this Tennessee defense, I'm going to be looking at it and say, we're going to run it until you stop it. And, and you can get the big play. Tennessee defense has shown they'll give up a long run. So it does the same thing as the pass. So I, I got to believe if I'm Vanderbilt, the only way, I, I, you know, I would be kicking myself after the game if I lost and I took my foot off the run game and started trying to throw the ball. Well, Missouri opened the second half last week with an interception that wound mm -hmm. up being a big deal. Um, your thoughts on, in terms of turning momentum and giving UT some breathing room there, uh, your thoughts on the idea of run, run, run until you put me in a passing situation? 
Uh, I would do that. And I think Missouri made that mistake. And I, unless I've got third and 10 and I'm Vanderbilt, of course, Missouri had third and 21 and ran it for yeah. 29. So, yeah. <laughs> but still, I, I, I think that uh, if you're Vanderbilt, that's what you do until Tennessee shows it can stop it. And that's not only would I go that way if I'm Vanderbilt, but what does that do if you're having success? Typically, it shortens the game. It limits the number of possessions Tennessee would have on offense. It keeps Dobbs off the field. So if I'm Vanderbilt, I'm going to run it. I'm going to try to chew up the clock. And, and hopefully, if I'm Vanderbilt, score on those drives. Best way to demoralize a defense, too. I mean, you, should, yes. you, you get run on. And Will, you know that. You get yeah. run on. Your mood goes quicker than if somebody says, well, you hit a bomb over me. Okay, that's disappointing. But if it's time after time and you're getting blown five yards off the well, ball. Now, you got a dissenting Yeah, I view. do. Because if you got to do it time after time, you may turn it over. And that Tennessee defense forced four turnovers last week. So you can give up all the yards you want. But if you're forcing teams to kick field goals like you did against Kentucky in the red zone, and you're forcing four turnovers like you did against Missouri, nobody cares about the yards. They care about the points. And I think part of the reason teams have been able to run it is Shoup recognized they were giving up the deep ball. I think they're backing off. I don't think Vanderbilt can make those same threats deep that Missouri and Kentucky did. So I don't think it's going to be as simple as run at every play. Kyle Shermer has gotten better on the pass side of things. He's not spectacular, but some of the guys who've thrown on Tennessee this year, last year, have not been. Um, so I don't know about that. I will say this, though. In terms of a coach actually being willing to go out there with a game plan of we're going to run it 90% of the time, this guy's coming from Stanford. I mean, that's where Derek Mason is from. And if there's ever an offense that would sit there and play 1950s football with you and do that, it would be Stanford. If you're not scoring, but Tennessee's offense puts the pressure on you sometimes. They do sometimes. I mean, I, I think this is going to be Tennessee's best test on offense that you've seen since Alabama. Mm -hmm. I think this is the best defense you will have faced. You look at the number of points they've given up to teams across the SEC. It ain't much. 13 I mean, Ole Miss, to Florida, 16 to Georgia, 17 to Ole Miss. And, yes, and Ole Miss had been lighting everybody up, and they got 17 points against Vandy. So I don't know that Tennessee's going to be able to sit there and build some huge lead that forces them to, into passing. Now, clearly. It's not been Tennessee's M.O. either to get off to a good start. That's right. Typ typically, typically. Typically. So so do you think you, you disagree with the idea of running it until you have to I think to pass? any coach would run it until he could. I just don't think it'll be as easy as, it, as maybe we're making it sound. No, I don't Missouri think or Kentucky. Easy. Right, because they had the threat of the spread. And I don't think, you know, I agree with you that co coaches would say that and you would think that, but you don't see it happen often where a team winds up with 70 rush attempts and six pass attempts. <laughs> yeah. uh, you don't often see it. I, again, Missouri came out through the ball in the start of the second half, interception. That was a perfect example of why you just keep running the football. Coaches tend to outsmart themselves at times, I think. We'll see if Derek Mason does. I would keep running until Tennessee stopped it. Well, what's well, the best thing Vanderbilt does also on offense? Run football. Well, I mean, you go back to, and Will and I were talking about this before the game, and i got to get to a break here, but long-time Vol fans remember the 1986 Alabama game. Toss, seat, <laughs> toss sweep 28. Tennessee Bobby could Humphrey. not stop Bobby Humphrey, and Alabama mm -hmm. just kept saying, really, can't stop it? Here it is again. Bobby, go. <laughs> Bobby, go. Here you go again, Bobby. And everybody in the stands is like, why can't you stop that one play? They were smart enough to just say, well, they can't stop it. We'll keep running it. I'll be interested to see what Vanderbilt and Derek Mason does on Saturday night. All right, when we come back, what should Tennessee do on offense? Should they slow things down to try and protect the defense? And how big is this game for Butch Jones? Come on back. Thinking of a gift for the entire family? Games and Things has great deals on all in stock and special order pool tables. With holiday movies and bowl games coming up, be sure to check out the largest selection of theater seating in the area. For those last minute gifts, see Games and Things for Q and Case combos, darts and dartboards, poker chip sets, table tennis, foosball, and air hockey tables. Or if you can't decide, get a Games and Things gift card. It's your holiday destination, Kingston Pike at Lovell Road, Games and Things, because life should be fun. When it comes to your home, no one provides better security and audio video systems than Safety Systems. Control everything using your tablet or smartphone. Whether it's a hidden TV or the temperature in your home. Lighting, doors that open and close, lock and unlock. Cameras that allow you to watch your home from wherever you may be, all at the touch of a button. Trust Safety Systems, East Tennessee's leader in security and audio video systems. 
For nearly 40 years, East Tennesseans have trusted Madisonville Marine. They offer great prices, terrific customer service, and the biggest selection of boats in the area. Boats like the G3 Talon Series. Talons give you everything you want from an all-aluminum boat. A smooth ride thanks to wave-splitting entry lines, lockable storage, live wells, insulated coolers. G3 Talons have it all. See for yourself at Madisonville Marine. There's no better place to buy a boat. At Phoenix Conversions, for 25 years, we've been the place to take your car, truck, or SUV for custom accessories and conversions. Whether it's that time of season, you want to personalize your ride for performance, or just stand out from the crowd, Phoenix Conversions carries the area's largest selection of custom accessories, built tough and fitting your everyday life. When it has to be the best, call Phoenix Conversions. Welcome back into the Sports Source Kickoff presented by Madisonville Marine. This segment brought to you by Phoenix Conversions. And what they do is they provide quality vehicle conversions on trucks, on vans, on SUVs. They've been doing this since 1987. We were talking about that 86 Alabama game. Right after that, they went out and started doing this, and they're still doing it today. Phoenix Conversions. Okay, uh, we've got the buzzers on the counter. We're going to have to be quick here in this segment. I'm going to ask a question. If you want to jump in on it, you have to hit the buzzer. If you don't like what someone else is saying and you want to cut them off and interrupt them, you just hit the buzzer. All right. <laughs> First question. Tennessee's defense is weak right now, obviously. Can slash should the offense be slowed down, slow that tempo, although they're hardly Oregon, but should they slow the tempo further to protect the defense? Mike Griffith, I know you wrote about it this week. I'll let you start. Well, actually, you got to hit your buzzer, but I'm still going to throw it to you. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think when they can, you know, I said in that last segment, it's very important that Tennessee's offense puts pressure on the Vanderbilt offense so Vanderbilt can't just play field position and pound the football. So if tempo is what's enabling you to move the ball against Vanderbilt, then keep doing that. But if tempo's not working, you need to be smart about it until Vanderbilt presses you. And then I think you got to do what you got to do to score. Well, I, I agree in some of that. I think you don't want to take away from your offense. I think you want to let your offense run as normal yes. early in the game. Try to get the points. Now, if you go up by two touchdowns, all of a sudden that play clock's going to get down to two before I snap it again. So I think it depends how this game goes. But if Tennessee can get a lead, by all means, you need to try to protect your defense and keep them off the field by using the play clock and running it down. You get anything? Well, not a lot. I, I can't argue a lot with that. So that's why I was hesitant to okay. hit my buzzer. But I, I do think one of the things from Tennessee, when they keep that, that hurry up pace, I think that's to their advantage late in the game against defenses. And I think you're going to have to outscore Vanderbilt. So I, I would keep the pace unless I had a comfortable lead. I'm going to keep that pace and I'm going to keep it going. And my plan is to try to outscore Vanderbilt and not try to have these 12 play, 88 yard drives that consume six minutes because. I don't know if they can. Well, I don't know but, if they can either. Yeah. I mean, it's a big but, play but, offense. And, it's but, whatever but Josh Dobbs decides to run. It, and, it, and it's <laughs> not, they don't run that quick tempo either. Yeah, so I, I, I would not take myself out of what I think I do best tempo wise. Agreed. So I, I don't know. If you've got a big play offense, I don't know how you protect your t a defense that is on the field for 110 snaps. I and if I'm scoring, they it. get to rest for three minutes after I've scored. <laughs> All right. TV timeout. <laughs> Butch, <laughs> Butch, <laughs> off the Butch Jones has the UT program in its best shape. <laughs> three straight bowls in a row since 2 3 4 But he's gotten a lot of heat this week, especially he made the comment that his team won the most important championship, their cha the championship of life. All right, I, look, I don't care about press conferences, and until Twitter, no one else did. It's way overblown. I think it's interesting people are wanting him fired over a comment. Look, whether you voted Republican or Democrat, Donald Trump said some crazy stuff, right? And we still voted him president. I think if Republicans, Democrats would still agree, did he really say that? We voted him president. So how can you sit there and say, oh, Butch Jones with this comment? I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't go there. You can't go there. So putting this back in perspective, take that out of it. How big of a game is this for Butch Jones? Huge. Gonna hit your buzzer. And you guys aren't, you guys aren't, 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 aren't mixing it up like you used to with the buzzers. So go ahead. Uh, I think it's huge because, one, you have – you didn't win the East Division, so that was significant. Secondly, the Sugar Bowl is on the line. If you lose to Vanderbilt, that means you've blown the potential of going to the Sugar Bowl. You're also 4-4 four and four in a weak East Division in a year when you were supposed to win it, and you've got fans on your rear end, whether they should be or not, based on some of the comments you've made. 
I thought it was a little bit more alarming that you did not acknowledge after the game about, yes, yeah, disappointing you didn't win the East. But because the fans are after you right now, I think it's the biggest game he's had in Tennessee. Also, how many coaches lose to Vanderbilt and have a job at Tennessee for very long thereafter? <laughs> there's it, it, there's your there's uh, your results. Having right to there. former, having to duly. That's right. So I agree with both these guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> That's it. You agree? <laughs> I think it's probably. What's funny is, is this the biggest game of his career? Until now, the biggest game of his career was Florida. We all talk mm -hmm. about oh, that's that, the biggest that's game, and he won that one. But that just shows you wins only get you so far. Losses, they hang with you forever. I've always mm -hmm. said wins are like haircuts. Give it two weeks, you better get another one. In terms of losses, they're scars. They never go away. People remember all those losses, and when you lose to Vanderbilt, they will not forget that. So, huge, huge game for Butch Jones, uh, whether he's champion of life or not. Uh, when we come back, Tennessee is about an eight-point favorite over Vanderbilt. Ooh. Do we think they'll cover? Why or why not? Come on back. From East Tennessee to the Carolinas, no job is too big for Benedict Construction. Patios and decks, custom remodels, even custom homes. With a reputation for excellence, rely on the custom work of Benedict Construction. For nearly 40 years, East Tennesseans have trusted Madisonville Marine. They offer great prices, terrific customer service, and the biggest selection of boats in the area. Boats like G3 John boats, built Gator Tough. G3 Johns include all the features you could want from a workhorse boat. Massive live well capacity, lockable storage, even a midship fuel tank that allows for smoother running. See for yourself at Madisonville Marine. There's no better place to buy a boat. At Phoenix Conversions, for 25 years, we've been the place to take your car, truck, or SUV for custom accessories and conversions. Whether it's that time of season, you want to personalize your ride for performance, or just stand out from the crowd, Phoenix Conversions carries the area's largest selection of custom accessories, built tough and fitting your everyday life. When it has to be the best, call Phoenix Conversions. Have you been hurt in a car wreck? Every red dot on this map marks a car wreck case worked by the car wreck attorneys, Bill Hotz and Associates. Like this one on North Peters Road. Lee got hurt when she was broadsided by a speeding car. The insurance company offered nothing, so we went to court and got a verdict of $99,000. We've been fighting these battles for 30 years and we're ready to fight for you right now. Experience you can trust, Bill Hotz and Associates. From kitchens and bathrooms to custom patios, decks, living rooms, and even shutters. Let the remodeling team at Benedict Construction turn your home into your dream home. On the roster. Welcome back into the Sports Source kickoff presented by Madisonville Marine. This segment brought to you by Safety Systems and our old buddy J.J. Serlis, VFL, Vol for Life. He works with Safety Systems. You need to give them a call. Whether it's security needs or entertainment needs, they are the best in all of East Tennessee. I can personally vouch for them. SafetySystems.com to learn more. I want to remind you, Friday, uh, it's tomorrow, 4 p.m., Sports Radio WNML 990, 99.1. I'll be joining Jimmy. John Wilkerson and Mr. Overstreet for the Pigskin Panel. We hope you will join us Sunday for the Sports Source, Sunday, 11 a.m. WAT6, top rated sports show in town. Thanks to you. We appreciate that. Next up, the Vols opened as a nine and a half point favorite this week. That line has now shifted. One of the casinos has it at 7.5, two of the casinos in Vegas have it at 8. Will the Volunteers cover an eight point spread versus Vandy? Why or why not? Will Overstreet? Well, I mean, you really think about this game, you could see it going two ways. I could see the Vols winning by 20, and then I could see this being a dogfight to the end, and the, one of the teams comes out with a three-point win. I don't think they're going to cover. I think this is going to be a dogfight of a game. I just, I just see it. you got one team that's got all the motivation, I believe. They're playing pretty good. We've seen this defense. Uh, so I have to believe it's going to be a very close game. Well, I see it going one of two ways, too. Either Josh Dobbs is healthy and on the field, or he's not on the field. And if he's on the field, Tennessee's going to win by two touchdowns. Because number 11 does understand the significance of the Sugar Bowl. He has talked about the legacy of Team 120. He knows what's on the line. He, he's, he's the poster child for resiliency. 
Dobbs is going to beat Vanderbilt. And don't forget, Derek Barnett's got a little homecoming and one more sack to go to tie Reggie White, the all-time record. Jimmy, will they cover an eight-point spread? Why or why not? I, I don't think they will because I don't think their defense is going to be good enough. I think, and here's the thing, Vanderbilt, the worst game they've had in conference play was they allowed 27 points to Missouri of all teams. But they have a good, solid defense, and they're coming off a one-sided win over Ole Miss. I, look, I think Tennessee can get to 30, close to it, but I think Vanderbilt is too because I don't think no. Tennessee's defense is good enough to stop them. And so, and I know Vanderbilt hasn't scored a lot in most SEC games other than Ole Miss, but I just don't think Tennessee's defense will will allow Tennessee to beat the spread. I think Tennessee. I agree with you. I don't think they'll cover. I think they'll win. I don't think they'll mm -hmm. cover. Tennessee's offense is better than Vandy's offense. But Vandy's defense is better than Tennessee's defense. That tells me it's going to come down to turnovers, penalties, and the kicking game. I hate to say that, it sounds like a cop out, but I really think that's what it's going to be in this issue. It's going to be a general kneeling game, only with more points. It's going to be the team that makes the fewest <laughs> mistakes. Hey, next week, we'll be right back here on Fox 43 to break down Tennessee's season. We'll have a postseason look at the volunteers. That'll be 7 p.m. on Fox 43 next week. See you Sunday at 11 a.m. on WATE 6. Thank you. This has been a presentation of Fox 43 Sports.